Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories, where today, my girlfriend of seven months won't allow my parents to move in with us even though I own the house that we live in. My girlfriend, Alice, who's 34, and I, 34 male, have been together for a while now. Although we're not married, we both live in my house. We were discussing marriage options though. The thing is, my parents are getting older and I've recently moved to the USA. I wanted them to remain together with me and so did they. I offered to bring them over here and they were agreeable to the idea. But I didn't want to leave them alone or to just get a house for them like that, so I asked them to live with me. When Alice heard about this, she was against the idea. She said that I can't just invite someone else to live with us and I told her that it was not just someone else and that we're talking about my parents. She said that she does not want that and asked me why I'm even doing it. I told her, well, they're my parents and I want to look after them. I'm not asking you to do that either. She protested by saying that I'm valuing my parents more than her and asked me to just get them to an old age home or something. I lost my temper at that and told her to mind her own business and that it's against my values to just abandon my parents once they get old. It resulted in a full-blown argument and in the end I told her, I get to decide who lives in my house, so don't interfere with my affairs. She's now sour with me and is not talking to me, but I wonder whether I did anything wrong. Am I the jerk? Edit. I told her about it to discuss it with her in the sense that I let her know beforehand in advance so that she could prepare for it and to also get her opinion, but she was against it from the very beginning. But as they are my parents, I did not want her approval per se, if that makes it clear. And no, she doesn't pay the rent. She's from the same culture as I am and has taken care of her parents before. Not in the same way I did, but she's done a lot for them herself. Another edit, as some deemed it necessary. We've been together for around five to seven months. You completely dismissed your girlfriend's feelings and you wonder if you're the jerk? Yeah, you are. It may be your house that may give you the raw power to authorize your parents to stay, but your partner has wants, desires, and needs and feelings too. And it would be a huge shock to suddenly go from living with a partner to living with them and their parents. You didn't even discuss it. You just decided you had the power to do it and you did it. Then you basically told her to shut up when she voiced concern. It may very well end up being you living with your parents with no girlfriend in the picture. I'd certainly have serious doubts about committing to a future with someone whose attitude is that if they have the power to do something they want to do, then they're just going to do it and I can go buzz off. You're the jerk. Yes, it is technically your house and your feelings are understandable, but the fact that you're moving two people who will need a certain level of care into the house that you share with your partner, there was no discussion and apparently there's no room for compromise. I doubt you would have done this to a roommate, much less a serious romantic partner. You can move your parents in, but I'd expect your girlfriend to move out, especially if you come from a culture where the automatic burden of care goes to the female members of the household. Dude, she's going to dump you and move out. You may not be wrong about deciding who can live in your house, but you're definitely the jerk about it and you're going to destroy your relationship. You're the jerk. Also, you may have wanted to hear her opinion, but it's clear that whatever her opinion is doesn't matter to you because your mind is made up. Not the jerk. Good thing you hadn't married her yet or she'd be divorcing you and taking half your stuff. It's your house, my guy. She owns no part of it. There is no reason for you to require her permission at all. All you have to do is tell her, I've decided my parents are moving in with me on this date. Hopefully you'll be cool with that, but if not, I understand and we'll have to go our separate ways. Like, you've been dating her for six months. Reddit is crazy for thinking you need to discuss this and get her permission before making your decision. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his girlfriend? Please let us know. How dare he bring his parents to America and allow them to live with him when his girlfriend of six months isn't okay with it? Careful now, Karen. You know some people are going to get ticked off at you for agreeing with OP. They can be as ticked as they want. It's his house and they've been dating for six months. Karen refused to pay me for my work, so I sued her. This happened several years ago. I was working 40 hours a week programming at my main job, but I did occasional small projects in the evenings and on weekends for other clients. At one point, I was referred to a large company that runs major stadiums and event venues around the country. One of their stadiums is relatively close to where I live. I'll just call them Mark 1 for this story. The saga begins. This manager at Mark 1 said they wanted a simple administration database and user interface for employee timekeeping. Apparently, the old system they had was not working for them. I got details of what they wanted and drafted a set of specifications. 
told them I could write the system to the specs for $2,000 flat fee. They agreed. I immediately went to work and I turned out a database and UI for the system with full documentation in about two weeks. So I scheduled an in-person meeting to show them. Now, when I showed up at the meeting, someone representing the security department was there and he asked about getting some additional features. Sure, I told him, I can do that. So I went back, wrote up a change request and incorporated the additional features into the platform. I scheduled another meeting with Mark 1 for a couple of days later. When I got to that meeting, I noticed the audience had grown. There were two extra people from the finance department. Can you add feature X, feature Y, and feature Z? They asked. Sure, no problem. So I left, wrote up a CR, and added the features. A few days later, I met with them again. Imagine my surprise when the audience size had grown and the new attendees asked for more features. This went on for about five more rounds, and I was getting frustrated that I had specced out a two-week project that was now taking months, and I wouldn't be paid until I delivered, and they accepted the final product but I chugged along implementing all their change requests. But one day, the Mark 1 manager called me. Apparently, she had been speaking with other departments that weren't represented in her status meetings of ever-increasing mass. She gave me a list of dozens of new features they wanted, some of which would require a complete redesign of the core database and an overhaul of the UI. I had had enough. I told her, this is a complete overhaul of the original spec. I'll have to redesign and rebuild this from the ground up. Well, that's not my problem she responded. Well, actually it is. I'm not going to design and build an entirely new system until you pay me for the current one, built to the specs that we agreed on. After a short pause, she dropped a bomb on me. Well, we're not going to renegotiate. You can consider this project cancelled. That's not how this works. You still have to pay me for the work I've done. No, I don't. You haven't delivered anything. Sue me. And she hung up. Cue the malicious compliance. Meet me at the courthouse. I took Mark 1's manager's advice and went to the courthouse the next day to file a small claims court to recover $2,000 from Mark 1. On my court date a couple of months later, I went down to the courthouse and was greeted by an arbitrator. In my state, they have court-appointed arbitrators meet the litigants when they arrive to see if the parties can sort out the case with an agreement to maximize the judge's time. The arbitrator asked me, is there anything you would agree to to resolve this immediately? I thought about it and said, if they'll pay me 90%, $1,800, right now, I'll drop the suit. He then went into a slide room where the Mark 1 manager and the corporate lawyer were hanging out. I heard her screaming that they would rather pay it all or pay zero. The arbitrator came to me with the news and I told him, I heard and I'm happy to take it all. He laughed and said, no, they want to go to trial. Fast forward a couple of hours and we're standing in front of a judge. I'm at my table alone and the Mark 1 manager and lawyer are standing at the opposite table. The judge asked Mark 1 manager to tell her side first. She went into a very long speech about the project and corporate America and apple pie and all sorts of stuff. I stopped listening about 28 minutes ago. She talked non-stop for at least 30 minutes. Then the judge asked me for my story. Now I wasn't maliciously ignoring Mark 1 manager's long-winded rant. I was actually formulating a strategy. I thought to myself, the judge probably had people who liked to speechify in front of him all day every day. I also thought he might appreciate a short and sweet story that got straight to the point and didn't waste his time. So I said, Your Honor, they agreed to pay me $2,000 to design and build a software system for them. I completed the work based on the agreed specs, and then they decided to cancel the project after I was done. That was it. Then the judge asked me, How do I know you did the work? I had printed out the specs, change requests, documentation, and source code the night before. I lifted a ream of paper, 500 pages, from my table and offered it to the bailiff. Here's the code I wrote for them, your honor. The bailiff came to take it from me and the judge waved him off. No need, I can see it from here. The judge then asked Mark 1's manager, Is this true? She looked like she was in a daze. Uh, yes? Then I fined for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,000. About a month later, Mark 1 still hadn't paid. So I called the county sheriff and explained, sent him the court judgment documents, and he said, no problem, they'll pay. The sheriff actually called me later that day. He was on a cell phone, and I could hear him talking to the Mark 1 manager. He told her, cut a check for $2,000 right now, or he was going to rip your computer out of the wall and auction them off until the judgment is satisfied. I don't know if he had that authority, but the sheriff seemed to have a grudge against Mark 1, and he was reveling in the opportunity to dog them out. Apparently, Mark 1 believed he had the authority because... Long story short, 
The sheriff had a $2,000 check in his hand about 15 minutes later, and it was in my mailbox about a week later. Am I the jerk for breaking up with my boyfriend over the orange peel theory? I was scrolling through TikTok when I saw a post about the orange peel theory, which to sum it up is when you ask another person to do a small task for you, like peeling an orange or asking them to tie your shoes for you. Both of these are tasks that you could do by yourself. The real test is how they respond to you. If they respond with, you can do it yourself, can't you do that? I guess. Then they are not willing to do small tasks for you and will most likely fail to do larger tasks for you in the future. However, if they do it willingly or take the initiative to do it immediately, then they pass in a way. Now on to the situation. My boyfriend of 7 months was sitting on the couch when I saw the TikTok video explaining the theory and I decided I should try it out. Up to this point, we were happy, but now looking back on it, I'm not surprised by how he responded. I asked him to tie my hair up for me and he looked at me and asked me why I couldn't do it. At first, I thought that maybe he was intimidated by my long hair. However, he just had long hair in the past, so he knows how to tie it up. I asked him again, thinking it was just a fluke, but he told me that I could do it since I was in the kitchen and he needed to relax, stating he just got off work. I know what y'all are thinking. Let that man relax. He just got off. Y'all, he works from home. And even if he was truly tired, he has plenty of energy to play games and go out to the bar with his friends. Regardless, I honestly didn't want to break up and thought it was dumb to throw a relationship away over a TikTok. Well, that was until later in the day when I asked him if he could toss a towel in the dryer so I could be warm when I got out of the shower since I forgot to do it myself. Surprise, surprise, he never did it and just made me realize how much I do for him and his daughter that is not even mine. And I think I've fed, held, and changed her more than he has. So Reddit, I ask you, am I the jerk if I go through with this? Edit. I admit that I should not have taken advice from TikTok and that it showed immaturity to do so. However, I disagree on the fact that what happened wasn't a big deal. The method worked and made me see that I do a lot more for him than he does for me. Our relationship is not going to end because of my towel not being warm or my hair not being up, but because I realize that I'm just settling for a lazy man who doesn't take me out, doesn't help me out with his baby, and has no motivations in life except to live at his parents' house, play video games, and drink, all while taking advantage of what I do for him. In my mind, since we are so new, seven months, these problems are foreshadowing what's to come, and I see no future with him or his baby. Update. First, I would like to thank you for how brutally honest the comments were. And no, I'm not 12. I'm 22. I would also like to clear up some things. First off, I didn't mean to make it seem like I was testing him like a crazy girlfriend who sets her boyfriend up for failure. I simply used the theory to see what he would do out of curiosity and came to the realization that I was giving 90% while he was giving 30% into the relationship. The theory helped me take off my rose-colored tinted glasses and truly see just how much I'm doing without an ounce of appreciation. As for the ones who are saying that they would also refuse the small tasks, this simply does not apply to me. If my partner asked me to tie his shoes, I would be down on one knee because I feel like it's a simple way to show love. Previously, I had never asked him to do something that I could do myself since I'm relatively independent. This was not the case for him since he uses me for almost everything. Babysitter while he goes out, nighttime nanny, chef, cleaner, washing machine, chauffeur, etc. As I took time to read the comments, there was a lot of reflecting and I knew I had to talk to him and give him a chance to work this imbalance out. I texted him and told him we needed to talk and he asked me for a ride to my house since his mom was out. I picked him up, but to my surprise, he had his baby. So I asked him if we could just stay in the driveway and talk. He told me that he was hoping we could talk on the way when I asked him on the way to what? He told me that his buddy wanted to meet up for drinks and I just lost it and told him to get out of my car. I just let out everything I was thinking and feeling. He looked very confused, but then he changed his tune and started blaming me, saying I was waiting too long to tell him this and that his daughter is already bonded to me. She's about one. I'm not sure what to do. I went home and my phone was filled with messages from his mom saying I needed to step up and be a good mom and future wife. The thing is, I don't want to be either. Lastly, I know you guys don't like the orange peel theory, but I think I dodged a bullet. Or the ones who feel bad for him, he dodged a bullet. Relationships aren't always even, but OP was feeling like her emotional needs weren't being met. She took the next responsible step and made a plan to talk to her boyfriend about it. That's what you do when you have a problem. You sit down and talk about it. Even when you don't believe there will be a change, it's best to give them a chance. Unfortunately, while the boyfriend agreed to meet, it appears his plan was to pawn the baby off on her while he went out with a friend. Sorry, but when you schedule a time to talk about your relationship, 
and the other party won't take that seriously, what are your options except call it quits? I'm not a fan of petty tests, but I'm a huge fan of the thinking of provoked an OP. Better to leave a bad relationship earlier rather than later. I think the hair tie test was stupid, I'd probably say no too. But the towel thing was the real test that she wasn't even trying and that gave her the results she needed. She definitely dodged a bullet, but I think observation would have shown her the same thing. I mean, it does sound silly, but it totally paid off in this instance. He was just using her as a free babysitter. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her boyfriend? Or ex-boyfriend? Please let us know. Hey, Reddit boy, go get me a McFlurry. What's wrong? You forget how to drive or something? I knew you'd fail the orange peel test. I'm divorcing you. It's us or grad school. I used to work for a company that advertises knights, horses, and real weapons. If you know, you know. I was a follow spot operator. Basically, you point the big light at the horsey man to highlight them. The company didn't seem to like hiring extra people for that position, and in hindsight, the turnover rate was pretty high. Plus, pay was $10 an hour. This is all important. During my work there, I had major surgery, which had me out for two months, requiring quitting and hiring back. That never seemed to be an issue. A few months after that, I developed a pre-septic bacterial infection to a mild form of sepsis. My fever was 103, and my heart rate kept going up. I was sick. This necessitated me being out for a week. However, for some reason, I had to miss an extra night of work and forgot to call in, largely because my meds knocked me out. This was my bad. Again, important. At the same time, I had been accepted into graduate school, and I had a class that met one Saturday a month. I was called into my boss's office to discuss the no-call no-show. The conversation went as follows. Manager. Hey, OP, you did a no-call no-show. That's pretty bad. Me. I'm sorry. I sent you an email and a doctor's note after, as soon as I could. I understand this is an issue, though. Manager. Well, you've been written up for it, but that's not what's concerned me enough to call you in today. Oh? You're asking for a Saturday off every month. That's our highest attendance day. We can't do that. Me. I thought with enough advance notice, you could schedule around me. Manager. See, that's just the problem. We've had to constantly lean into your needs, and now it's time for you to consider our needs and your team's needs. What are you saying? It's either us or this class. I need this class for full-time attendance. I can't drop it. Manager smugly. Well, I guess we'll just have to see where we are in two months. Okay. I left his office and told my coworkers that I liked goodbye. Then I clocked out. He comes storming out to my truck, screaming at me, asking how I could quit on him like that. I told him he wanted me to choose between grad school or this rinky-dink job, and I made my decision. I then took off the costume belt and handed it to him, saying I'd bring the rest back when I had time. A week later, I got my first real stagehand job that paid $20 an hour. So yeah, forget you, dude. I have a master's now, and I'm set to start teaching at colleges this next semester, and I'm a pro stagehand. Never give your employees crappy ultimatums. Am I the jerk for saying that my sister should follow my parents' suggestion when it comes to her wedding on Thursday? My sister is getting married. The wedding is on Thursday, the 23rd, and instead of doing a big traditional affair, her and her fiancé opted out of all of the normal wedding things. They are going to the registry office to sign the papers, and then they're going out to dinner. They chose Thursday because they both have the day off. They work in a hospital, and they don't always have weekends off. They invited me, my parents, my brother, and her fiancé's dad to witness them signing the papers and to eat dinner with them because they both have to work the following day. We all think this is a great idea and we're happy for them. There's just one thing my parents suggested. My brother struggles with time blindness. It's debilitating to him. Even if he sets alarms or reminders to take medication for ADHD, it still affects his life. It has also affected his jobs and his relationships. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you how much it affects him. He's currently out of work because of it and he's missed things such as flights, sporting events, and other life events because of it. I cannot stress how debilitating it is for him even if he has someone there reminding him and trying to get him out the door on time. Here's the issue. The registry office is so busy that you're required to make an appointment. You cannot just walk in. It's the same for the place my sister and her fiancé want to have dinner at. A reservation is required. Knowing that my brother has trouble because of his time blindness, my parents suggested that instead of going to that particular registry office and that particular place for lunch, my sister and her fiancé should instead go to a different registry office. It is not far away or anything, and this one does not require appointments. It allows walk-ins. 
There are also many restaurants near the registry office and none of them require reservations. This way, we wouldn't have to miss their appointments because of my brother. It would work out for everyone. I thought it was a good idea. However, my sister was incensed when my parents brought it up. Even though the other registry office is only one village over and going there would not change anything, she said that she won't allow our brother's issues to dictate that day. Further, she said that rather than missing the appointment, if my brother was late, they would go on ahead and if he misses it, that's not her problem. I couldn't believe or understand why she was so incensed and neither could my parents. I thought their suggestion was a good idea. It would allow my sister to get married on Thursday, like she wants to, without my brother's issues causing the appointment to be missed. Am I the jerk? I ask because I genuinely thought my parents made a good suggestion that would work well for everyone. You're the jerk. Unless your brother is made of liquid or gas, he can be physically brought to this event by another family member. If this is a true disability for him, he needs extra assistance from a designated family member to assist him. Not for the entire event to be rearranged, which would still not actually solve the issue. Just because the alternative office and restaurant allow walk-ins still does not prevent him from forgetting the event altogether or still turning up ridiculously late and making everyone wait potentially hours. This is 100% not a solution in any sense. My fiancé is gone for the weekend and I'm enjoying myself too much. I'm 25 female. My fiancé, 23 male, left a few days ago for a job. We both work in creative industries and tend to work on short-term contracts as well as bartending on the weekends to keep money consistent. We've been living together for almost two years. He's left before to visit family, but this time I was excited for him to leave. Usually I feel bad when he goes because I feel like I'll miss him. Last year he had a really stressful contract. During that time I picked up some extra household chores and since then we've argued about them. I didn't mind doing them throughout the project, but we already have difficulty dividing household chores. I take a long time to do them and I can't tell if it's because I'm a perfectionist who cleans every inch of something once I start or if it's because I'm not getting as much help as I'm being told I am. I feel like I've always been calling out for help. I ask for us to do it and I get an attitude, a list of other things he has to do, like work, when we work the same jobs, and a time limit. It's not a set time limit, but his helpfulness has a battery and it gets low quickly. Even when he does a task, it's also done slow and not a good job. I have to go and tweak the work he does. We don't have the same definition of clean. His is that everything looks clean and mine is that every inch, even the ones we don't see, should be clean. We live in a historic building and I'm not risking bugs. Sorry. We made slight peace with it before he left. Slight. Then he actually left. I danced in the living room. I sang in the kitchen. I finished a project. I cooked myself an awesome dinner. I tidied up all of my spaces to enjoy. I went to work. I came home. It was still clean and I danced and sang all over again. I woke up the next day and to make a long story short, lived my best life. I'm having a blast. Then he called me to tell me how much he missed me and I felt so weird. I'm not painting him in the best light in this story, but he truly is my best friend, my heart, my boo bear. It's not that I don't want to be with him, I'm just enjoying my own company so much that I don't miss him. He's so kind and loving and I love him, but not being able to reciprocate that feeling left me feeling weird and then a little resentful about the cleaning stuff. I don't want to have more fun without him. I don't want to feel relieved when he leaves because it means I'll actually get something done. Is this fixable? It's been on and off for two years, this cleaning thing, but me not missing him when he's gone, I'm scared. Having some space is healthy every now and then in a relationship. You don't need to be so hard on yourself for enjoying time apart. Maybe have an open and honest conversation about your feelings when he gets back. Not saying, I didn't miss you, but saying, it felt really good to walk into a clean home. This is something I've realized is important to me. What can we do to compromise? You are perfectly entitled to some me time when in a relationship. It's perfectly normal. Don't feel guilty about it. Well, what do you think? Should OP stay with her boyfriend or not? Please let us know. When you're a very clean person, but you live with a partner who doesn't have the same standards as you do, it can feel amazing once they're finally gone. Am I the jerk for telling my sister to not come back to my home because of her unruly kids? Yesterday was my birthday. My sister came in from New York to spend the weekend with me and brought her kids along. I'm not big on birthdays, but I figured I'd do something small and at least spend time with my family. My sister arrived Friday night with the intention of spending the weekend. I live on the third floor. Her kids woke up at 6 a.m. Saturday morning and were running in my small three-bedroom apartment. She also has two teenagers who left my bathroom messy and out of order. 
They were also leaving lights on, turning on the heat without notifying me, running up the light and electric bill. I gently pointed these things out to her and told her that we're on the third floor and out of respect for the neighbors downstairs, we should try to keep things quiet. I should point out that I have no kids and enjoy this aspect about my life. I don't hate them or anything and I enjoy being around them in my family, but I do get annoyed when kids are unruly and disrespectful, related or not. Anyway, she packed her things and made it seem like we were all good, said she was staying at my other sister's house and coming back the following day so that we can celebrate my birthday on Sunday. She gave me no indication that she was upset about anything I said or did during her time here. The next day, I get a measly HBD text and she was a no-show. She did not come to my home and left back to New York from my sister's home. I responded, thank you, but then later found out that she was upset that I asked her to control her kids while in my home. My mother eventually told me why she was a no-show for my actual birthday the following day and I texted her and let her know that moving forward, when she comes into town, that she should stay at my sister's. She tried to act like she was unaware about what was going on, but I couldn't really give a hoot. The damage was done. Am I in the wrong for asking her to rein in her kids while they're in my home? I ended up spending my birthday alone with zero family, all because of a misunderstanding. Maybe it was deserved. Edit. The kids are aged 13, 14, and 3. The 3 year old is very rambunctious, while 13 and 14 are always on their phones and leave messes everywhere they go. I could tell whether they were in a room or not after they left the room, depending on the condition of said room. The other sister's two-year-old was also there. My neighbor just came in from a work trip Friday night and was most likely jet-lagged and tired. I wanted to be respectful of that. I just moved in on the 1st of November, and I'm broke and on a tight budget. Not the jerk. I'm surprised your other relatives weren't more sympathetic, but then my mother would have wasted no time in disciplining those kids. In this home, we don't behave that way. Sister sounds like one of those oblivious parents who thinks her kids can do no wrong. And it sounds like you live in an apartment, so yes, minding the noise level is important. I've seen queries in this forum about neighbors with noisy visiting kids. Sorry your family wasn't more supportive, why didn't other family members attend your gathering? But now you know that the notion of a family only extends so far. Not the jerk, and happy birthday. My Karen sister demands I adopt her kids. My sister, 31 female, was recently diagnosed with brainstem glioma. Apparently it's big and untreatable due to the location. I'm not sure how long she has, but most likely it will shorten her lifespan by a significant amount. Apparently, she's already experiencing some bad symptoms. My sister has three kids, a newborn and a two-year-old and a six-year-old. She asked me to take them once she passes on. No, we don't have family and her ex-husband wants nothing to do with the kids since she had cheated on him for years with many men and they aren't his. She doesn't know who the dad is. Personally, I, 25 female, am child free. My husband, 25 male, is child free as well. I told her no for the following reasons. One, since we are both child free, it would be unfair to ask my husband to make this kind of sacrifice. We both agreed to no kids when we got married. To change something like that generally means a divorce. 2. I am atheist. My sister wants me to raise them religious and to know God and take them to church. No. 3. I live in a different country where English is not the primary language. I can't teach a 6-year-old a new language when they don't know English well. 4. 6-year age gap means we didn't really grow up together and the memories I do have, she was always awful to me, like cynical. And after she moved out at 18, we haven't talked once besides at my parents' funeral. I don't even know her kids, let alone her. She cried and called me awful, but it's my life, and ultimately, I get to be selfish with it. A kid isn't an 18-year commitment, it's lifelong, and one I have decided not to take. She cheated with multiple different men and lost her husband. I don't think it's my job to swoop in and save her from consequences of her own actions. I don't feel like I owe her anything. Other people disagree. Friends of hers, whom I've never met, have been reaching out to me and calling me at all hours to leave nasty voicemails, saying I need to step up as a sister, but I just feel like she's trying to use me as her ticket out to passing and not feeling guilty. I'm going to edit so I don't have to continue to say this. I have offered to pay for DNA kits and anything else she needs to help find the fathers of these kids. She doesn't want to. Last edit. I will not be taking in the kids. It's not because I want to teach my sister a lesson or because they are less than for being a product of an affair. I brought it up because I know everyone would ask, where's the father? 
It's because my sister is a stranger. I haven't talked to her in over 10 years. I've never met her or her kids, and I don't want kids. My husband, yes, we talked, would leave. Realistically, it wouldn't work out. With his income, I wouldn't be able to afford the kids anyways. I'm child-free, not just because I'm selfish, like so many of you suggest, but because I have mental health issues that would prevent me from ever being a good parent. I have OCD. Not like I keep my house clean OCD, but where I need to shut a door several times until it's completely shut, or noises like dripping water drives me insane. Imagine having a newborn when sounds can drive you mentally insane. It's debilitating. My sister didn't deserve to pass on, and her kids don't deserve their fate. But realistically, their unbiological father is the one who needs to step up, not me. To those of you who said I'm the jerk, but then let me ask you, why aren't you adopting? Why aren't you fostering? Why aren't you making sure you get kids out of the system? Get off your high horse. Not the jerk. I feel bad for your sister, but now is the time to buy some ancestry DNA kits in order to search for those kids' fathers. And for the people messaging OP to step up and take the kids in if they really cared. It seems like her friends should be better candidates than an estranged sister who has no relationship with the kids. But then again, their friends would rather be flying monkeys than to step up. So, your sister is religious, but cheated on her husband and has three different baby daddies? How does that work? Not the jerk. You aren't obligated to take on parenting kids for any reason. The rest of the vitriol in this post was pretty unnecessary. That said, regardless of how you feel about your sister, she is a mother who's passing on and is trying to deal with all that entails, and also making sure her kids will be cared for. I don't think that has anything to do with guilt and everything to do with doing what any mother would do in this situation. Not the jerk. You didn't sign up to take on her kids. My husband and I are child free, but we have godchildren that would be entrusted to us if anything happened to their parents. We chose that, but if we hadn't, there is no way we would just agree to it. Just because your family doesn't mean you're obligated to do anything for anyone. If you do something, it should be because you chose to. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his sister? Please let us know. My husband stole $6,000 from my account to spend on golf clubs. I'm a nurse and have been working more hours for the past six months to be able to save money to fix the ceiling in our house. I've saved up $8,000 in my account and since my husband hasn't worked since 2020, I'm trying to balance rent and utility payments. My husband is a golf enthusiast and so are his friends. Only difference is that all of his friends are well off and they can afford expensive golfing gear and trips. They mentioned wanting to go on a golfing trip next week and invited my husband, but he initially refused. Though he really wanted to go, but complained about how his friends bought fancy new golfing gear while all he has is his old gear. He asked if I could lend him $6,000 so he could buy a set of golfing clubs, but I refused because $6,000 for a set of clubs is crazy expensive, especially for someone who doesn't work. He got upset and accused me of holding his employment over his head when he couldn't help it. Anyway, I thought we were over this argument, but I had discovered that he had pulled the $6,000 out of my account and purchased the set behind my back. I went home and exploded on him. He swore he'd return the money once he gets home from the trip, but I told him he had no right to take the money and spend it on a set of golf clubs while the ceiling needs fixing. He said the ceiling doesn't require $6,000 either but the kid's room was affected too. I demanded that he return the set or pay me the $6,000 right then and there. He told me I was being unfair to him and that he's feeling stuck because his friends can afford to buy whatever while he's being yelled at for wanting something for himself for once. I told him to get a job and buy himself whatever. He tried to tell me he'll pay me when he finds a job, which is after he gets back from his trip, but I refused. He kept begging me to let him just go on the trip and we'll figure it out later on. But I said no. If it wasn't for something as important as the ceiling, I would have maybe waited. But he's saying that I'm controlling of his life. Edit. First of all, I'm getting too many comments. I'm too overwhelmed to respond. People that are suggesting I return the clubs myself, I can't because he never brought them to the house. I've never seen them and I don't know where he's hiding them. I suspect his brother's house but I'm on really bad terms with him and can't go to his house. So the argument now is just him pushing to get me to stay quiet until he gets back from the trip, but I'm putting my foot down and refusing. Not the jerk. This is a massive red flag. 
He stole from you. $6,000 is a lot of money, and if he's not working, how on earth is he going to pay you back? The fact that you're working your butt off to repair the ceiling, which is a major need, and he thinks that golf clubs are far more urgent than home repairs really shows how childish he is. By her picking up even more shifts at work, probably. I can't get over how much of a jerk this guy is. He stole the $6,000 from OP's account. Yep, if it's not a joint account, then OP needs to report this to the bank and police, kick the deadbeat out, and let him face the consequences. She needs to set up a new account for herself at a different bank. Then she needs to refuse to pay for his greens fees and pretty much all recreational activities out of her paycheck. By the way, how's he paying for his golf trip? He's going to be complaining about her the whole time he's away. Finally, she needs to talk to a trusted counselor, friend, minister, or colleague and inquire if they think divorce is a reasonable course of action. Not the jerk. Please get yourself a divorce attorney ASAP. Your husband hasn't worked in two years and thinks $6,000 golf clubs are a reasonable purchase? That alone makes me deeply question his judgment. But the fact that he then stole your money to buy them is beyond the pale. This man is a selfish, unemployed, when literally everyone is hiring, thief, and you clearly can't trust him or his judgment. Lawyer up and get this jerk out of your life. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her husband? Please let us know. Tell homeboy he might want to try another sport. Golf probably is not the best idea for a broke deadbeat. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.